Hey guys, my name is Massimo, and today we're going to talk about how to lower your S197 Mustang. So this is going to be a guide to how to properly lower the S197 Mustang while keeping the suspension geometry from the factory all correct. Now I think a lot of the problems revolving around lowering Mustangs is that Mustangs are just cheap. They're easy cars to get into. You can get into a two valve GT for probably anywhere from like three to five grand. And so a lot of people, when they want to make the cars look better, they just throw springs on it and they're like, oh, we're good. That's not how it works. You have to put more work into it to make the car handle better, feel better, and make it a fun daily driver where it doesn't just feel like you're riding on rocks all the time to have no suspension travel. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what is needed to actually lower the car. And I'm gonna tell you at the end of the video about a key point that not a lot of people talk about that is pretty much essential to making the car handle better on either launches and digs, roll racing, or around corners. So first, we're gonna actually talk about dropping the car, your suspension. You're gonna have a few different options. Those involve lowering springs, coilovers, or air suspension. But we're not gonna go over air suspension today because bags have a much higher budget that you need to actually get into them. But for lowering springs and coilovers, both are gonna do the same thing. They're gonna drop the actual car. So with lowering springs, you have different spring rates and different drop rates for each type of spring. Now, typically, Mustangs sit higher in the back than they do in the front, especially with the S197s. So you're gonna to have to research springs to keep that in mind. Do you want a spring that is gonna sit higher in the back than in the front? You're gonna to have to get the same drop rate all the way around. But if you don't want that, you're gonna to have to get a spring that drops it lower in the back than in the front to have that same level look on the car all the way around. Also, different lowering springs have different spring rates. The cars are gonna ride different on different springs, obviously. Some are gonna be a lot stiffer and a lot firmer, and some are gonna be great for daily driving. You're not gonna feel a thing on the road. Typically, those less aggressive springs that are great for daily driving in the corners don't hold up so well, and you're not gonna get that really stiff suspension to go around corners and eliminate that body roll. But really, it's all about what look you're going for and then what application you wanna do. If you wanna do that road course feel and for it to be really stiff around the suspension, you're gonna to wanna to get a spring rate that complements that. Now, another thing that is recommended in the Mustang community is to also switch out your shocks and struts for aftermarket ones. That's because if you're going with a lowering spring that has a really aggressive spring rate and drop, you're gonna wear out those stock shocks and struts a lot quicker than the stock springs will. Now there's a lot of aftermarket options out there, but I went with the Coney Yellow Sport shocks and struts. Now I love mine because I actually have adjustable damping in on mine. Basically I can stiffen or soften the suspension stiffness just by turning the knob on each shock and strut individually, which is really cool because mine's a daily driver. So if I just want to drive to work one day and don't want to feel any of the bumps in the road, I can just soften the suspension step this real quick and I'm good to go. And if I want to go on those back roads, just stiffen them up, turn that knob, and I'm good to go on body roll. So I love the fact that you can have adjustable dampening on shocks and struts that are aftermarket. I think that's super cool and it's almost an entry level way to get into coilovers without actually spending all that money on coilovers. And now talking about coilovers, let's get into that. So coilovers are typically superior to lowering springs and shocks and struts because they handle better, the dampening is adjustable, and the ride height is adjustable. So basically you can actually adjust how high or low you want the car to sit. Now there's a lot of different coilovers out there with a lot of different budget ranges. But typically how it is, not always, but typically is the more you pay, the better quality you get and the more adjustability you get with the coilover. Now coilovers usually do just replace the entire shock, strut, and lowering spring assembly because usually it's a threaded shock body with a coil spring sitting on top. So you'll just swap that in for your stock shocks and struts or whatever aftermarket you set you have on your car. So typically how it goes is if you want to lower your car and you don't have that large of a budget, go with a lowering spring and definitely consider an aftermarket shock and strut set. But if you have a big budget and you definitely want the car to handle really well, you're gonna to wanna to go with those coilovers and some good ones too. You can buy some cheap coilovers and you're gonna get exactly what you pay for. Go with some good ones, do some research on what's gonna be the best for your application. You're not gonna regret that at all. And after all that is done, I think you should consider some caster camber plates or at least some camber bolts to correct the caster and camber of the front end of your S197. And also you may need a bump steer kit. Not everybody needs them, I don't need one on this car, but the further you lower the car, the more bump steer that gets introduced. And what the bump steer kit is gonna do, it's gonna correct the angle of the tie rods in relation to the spindles on the front end. So when you hit a bump while you're driving, the toe in the front end is not gonna change. So now, we got all the front end stuff out of the way, let's move on to the rear end and correcting that suspension geometry. So you got two options in correcting the lateral movement of the rear end. You can go with an adjustable pan hard bar, or you can go with a Watts link. 
Either way, you're going to limit that lateral movement and really improve stability in the back end. A panhard bar is going to go from the left and the right side of the car on an angle and it's going to limit that lateral movement. A watts link is basically going to connect at the left side of the car to your differential and the differential to the right side of the car. And you're really going to improve that rear end stability with a watts link. Watts link is much more expensive, but if you're doing road racing, you're going to want that over just a regular adjustable panhard bar. And I'm hoping to get that installed on this car pretty soon here. And also, you're going to want to go for some aftermarket lower control arms in the rear end. The stock control arms, the bushings are pretty soft and have a lot of play. So when you do go with an aftermarket set, you're going to get rid of a lot of that wheel hop and just improve stability in the rear end a lot. But the trade-off is you get a lot more NVH, noise, vibration, and harshness. So any noise that already exists in the rear end or the diff or anything like that is going to get transmitted through the car a lot more. So for example, I have a bit of diff wine from the 373 years in my car. And I think with the lower control arms I have in there in combination with the upper control arm and all the different stuff I have in there, the bushings really transmit a lot more of that noise inside the cabin. And along with lower control arms in the back, you're going to want to consider some lower control arm relocation brackets. What this is going to do is it's going to lower the connection point of the lower control arm to the axle. It's going to make it parallel with the ground again when your car is lowered. So because the car is physically lowered on lowering springs or coilovers, your control arm is not going to be parallel with the floor anymore, which means that you're going to lose some stability in the rear end, even if you do go with an aftermarket set of lower control arms. Those lower control arm relocation brackets are going to lower that connection point and restore that stability in the rear end. And one last thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get an adjustable upper control arm. That's going to correct the incorrect pinion angle of just lowering the car in general. And it's a little difficult to install, it takes a little bit of time, but after you do it, your pinion angle will be flush and the whole back end will be sitting really pretty and have a lot of stability in that rear end. And one last thing that most people don't talk about when modifying their Mustang is you want to get a set of sticky tires. If you're going to be putting all this money into making the car look better, making it handle better, giving it better traction, you're going to just want to get a set of sticky tires. Do all this work to your car, spend all this money, and the only connection to the actual ground is your tires. So my suggestion is, if you're building your car for a road course, or even really drag, and you have a pretty good budget, go with some Michelin Pilot Sport 4Fs or some Toyo R888Rs. They're both pretty straightable tires, and you're going to get awesome traction all of the time. If you don't have that high of a budget, maybe look into some Nitto NT555 G2s. Those are still going to be pretty sticky on the ground, they're going to be a great daily driving tire, and they're going to be a little more cost friendly than the Superior Pilot Sport 4Ss. So after all of this, I know costs add up quick, and you can get to the thousands really easily just putting on mods that I've said throughout this video. But if you still want your car to be streetable, you want it to handle our corners, have better traction and sit lower, you just have to do all of these mods. There's no getting around it and that's just the way it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've learned even one thing new in this video, drop a like down below and I hope it helped you out if you're looking to lower your S197. I did a lot of this research myself and took a lot of time just to browse through forums and learn about this stuff. So I really enjoy conveying my knowledge to you guys and teaching the Mustang crew about some of this stuff. But anyway guys, that's it for today. I'll catch you guys later.